Today we are going to install a planar diesel heater in a boat. Planar heaters are popular in marine and trucker applications. They are efficient and easy to install. They are basically a plug and play heater. There are technical requirements that you should pay attention to and we will cover many of those in this video. There are however questions that may not be answered in this video. Many of those questions can be answered in the online manuals as well as contacting planer if need be. But I think that you will find that after watching this video that you'll agree that a planer diesel heater is truly easy to install. First, you have to decide which model you want to install in your boat. There are four models of the planer diesel air heaters, ranging from 7,000 BTU up to 21,000 BTU. Every heater comes with these components. Tubing to connect your fuel line to the fuel pump and heater. Fuel line. Fuel pump. Fuel pump mounting bracket. Fuel pump cable from the heater to the fuel pump. Connector for fuel pump cable to your fuel pump assorted clamps, bolts, and screws, fuel pickup tube for a diesel fuel tank, a separate fuel tank if not using your fuel pickup tube, an intake and hot exhaust hose with insulation tubes, and a controller with connecting cable. Find a location to install your heater. It should be a ventilated space separate from gas engines and gas fuel tanks. It should also be in an area that has easy access to the heater itself. There are different ways to mount the heater. You can do a wall mount, a standoff mount, or suspend your heater. You also have to determine your diesel fuel source. It can be from your current onboard fuel tank or from the plastic fuel tank which comes in a kit or a larger tank from a marine supplier. You also should plan the exhaust line route and determine the hot air duct layout and locations for air vents. It is now time to obtain any additional hardware. That additional hardware will include a through-hull fitting for your hot air exhaust, additional exhaust clamps, muffler cement or high temp sealant for exhaust joints, mounting brackets, high temperature air ducting and high temperature air vents. But first, let's look how we planned out the installation in this boat. In planning where to install your heater, find a location that allows for airflow and that is away from fuel containment. We decided that a forward compartment below the cockpit and aft of the cabin would be a good location. The forward wall between this compartment and the cabin was ideal and we would be able to mount the heater above the lower hull to protect it against any unwanted water or contamination. By moving the water pump we would have room to install a duct to heat the cabin. Aft of the compartment that we decide to install the heater was another compartment that contained storage and fuel tanks. The forward bulkhead of this compartment was where we decided to install our diesel fuel tank. Exhaust outlets as well as any fresh air inlets should be mounted high on the hull or superstructure as to avoid possible water flooding to the heater. This boat has good freeboard 
and the upper part of the hull was accessible. The compartment that we had installed the heater had excellent ventilation, so no further exterior intake venting was necessary. This is your diesel exhaust out, your diesel fuel in, your diesel heater intake, air intake, your fresh air, and your hot air out. One will be going to your battery, your fuel pump, and your control module. Before fastening your heater to your boat, it is best to install your hot air exhaust hose, your air intake hoses, as well as the ducting to your cabin vents. When installing your through haul fitting, we applied a layer of Permatex sealant to both sides of the gasket so there will be a watertight seal. The hot air exhaust hose can become very hot during operation. Your exhaust hose, coat your outlet with some muffler cement. That way it will seal it and be a perfect fit. And also at the other end, where your through haul fitting goes, the same situation, muffler cement on that, can be picked up in any automotive store. Install three inch or four inch ducting. Cut oversized holes to run ducting through the bulkheads. You can split the ducting into two or three lines for better heat distribution throughout your boat. To install the fuel pump harness, you will notice on the top of the harness two numbers. Your red lead goes to the number one and black goes to number two. After you have snapped these leads to the harness, it is time to attach it to the fuel pump. A metal retainer clip is supplied. Snap the retainer clip as shown. Okay. Next step is to cut some hose, remove connection plug on end of fuel pump, Slide it in to the end. Put your clamps in place. Connect your nylon fuel line to the end. And secure your fasteners. and tighten them good and secure. You are looking at a full system, fuel system hookup. First is your plug-in going to your heater. Second is your fuel supply going to your heater, following through to the fuel pump and to the fuel pickup. Either a built-in tank or a supplied plastic nylon tank. Remember, your fuel pump is mounted to the bulkhead at a 45 degree angle. The installer has now attached the rubber connection to receive the fuel line, the heater air intake hose as well as the exhaust hose. It is now time to install the heater to the bulkhead. The heater has to be horizontal with the connections pointing down. Now that we've run the fuel line and the power to the fuel pump, we've hooked up the fuel line we're about to tidy up all our wire and make sure connections are good. Secure to the bulkhead at least every two feet. And plug it in to the fuel. Next step, power and our controller.
These are the components to your controller. We have a double sided tape which we can use on the controller to mount it or the actual mounting bracket which is bolted on and it just snaps into place. This is a connections. This is a plug-in connector which you have to assemble so that way you're not making a big hole to put this through. It comes disassembled. Follow your wiring colors. Remember there's five sockets and only four are being used. These just press in and lock into place just like so. If we make a mistake and put it in the wrong hole, take a small little screwdriver, push down the tab on the back of it and pull your wire connection right out. And just remember to bend the little tab back into place so it'll lock in on your next spot. So now comes the easy part, hooking up your main power harness. Run it directly to your batteries, secure cable every foot, and plug into your heater. Quick review of this installation. Our heater was installed on the forward bulkhead of this hatch. Our fuel tank was installed under our rear starboard hatch. Our heat to the cabin was installed above the first step into the cabin. The controller was installed on the cabin wall adjacent to the head. Below deck, the heater was on the forward port side. The area was well ventilated so we allowed the heater to draw air from the hatch itself. The heat exhaust hose was well secure away from wood and fiberglass and protective insulation was used in areas of concern. The heated air to the cabin was a short run of five feet and exited above the stairs. All wiring was secured every foot. First time power is supplied to your diesel heater, your controller will show a surrounding temperature with a slow blinking light on the left side of your display. This indicates that your heater is in the standby position. The display turns off in a few seconds. You can operate your heater in two modes. One mode is temperature mode and the other is power mode. Power mode supplies constant heat to your space regardless of temperature in the space. You can adjust the amount of heat coming from your heater. This mode is good for applications that has a lot of heat loss. Open cabins in fishing boats, for example. Temperature mode supplies heat to a chosen temperature and maintains that constant temperature. To switch to temperature mode, press any button or turn on the display. Then press the left arrow button once. The light is now blinking in the lower corner. This is temperature mode. To start the heater, press one time the center button. The display now shows the preset temp that will be maintained in the space. It will take up to three minutes for your heater to start. Once heat is felt, you can then adjust your temperature up or down by using the left or right buttons. Your small indicator light, if steady, indicates that the heater is running. Pressing any button once will bring up the heater display. To shut down, push the middle button again while the temperature display is on. The small indicator light is now blinking. This indicates that the heater is shutting down. This can take three to four minutes to complete to stop its cycle. The light will now start blinking at a lower space as the heater has now shut down and if need be, power to your heater can be turned off. Planer recommends that a power supply is always supplied to your heater to prevent accidentally disconnecting power before your heater has completely shut down. 
There are also safety features for your heater. If the indicator light starts to blink quickly during operation, this means that there is a malfunction in the system. Press any button to bring up a code which will help you identify the problem in the operation manual. Thank you.